Today I want to discuss the possibility of a supply shock in the U.S. for silver. To understand how this is possible, let's reflect on what we discussed in the last video. Since 1998, the U.S. has seen a 50% decline in mining output and a rise from 40% to 70% in foreign imports to meet silver demand. We also discussed that imports are likely to rise further as the current price environment is harming many American miners and we had a landslide of the Bingham Canyon mine wipe out a large portion of our domestic output. So the U.S. is highly reliant on foreign supply. So the question is, can we rely on foreign imports to always be available? Well, that's a great question, and we need to take a closer look at where we get our metal in order to answer that question. These numbers were taken from the USGS website from the 2012 report on silver. As you can see, 51% of silver imports comes from Mexico, 23 comes from Canada, and the rest comes from Peru, Poland, and other silver-producing nations. Today we are solely going to talk about Mexico and Canada, as they together compose three quarters of our national silver imports. First, let's look at Canada. If you recall from the last video, this chart looks awfully like what we were seeing with the American Eagle sales and the U.S. mining output. The similarity being that the national silver bullion products consume all of the domestic silver production coming from domestic mining operations making Canada and the U.S. highly dependent on their ability to recycle the metal and import metal wherever they can get it. To export a thousand tons of silver to the U.S. every year, Canada must be importing that metal from China or somewhere else as they do not produce that quantity domestically. It certainly would be interesting to figure out how that's possible. Also, if you notice in 2012, mining production picked up again by about 100 tons the likelihood of that trend continuing over an extended period of time is very unlikely given that the vast majority of Canada's silver reserves have been depleted. 81% of the metal in the ground in 1980 has been pulled out of the ground and what is left is nothing to get excited about. So now that we know that Canada is not a reliable source of silver, what about Mexico? Well from the end of 2012 to at least April when the most recent data is available, silver production has been dropping. Even though Mexico only has a couple years of data available on their INEGI website, the trend over the last couple of months looks very interesting. Whatever forces are driving Mexican mining production lower than the previous years on a month-to-month -month measure will likely reduce the amount of silver the U.S. will be able to import. Here is another chart showing the same data but using the percent change from the current month to the same month of the previous year. As you can see, silver production dropped by about 10% for both March and April of 2013. As Mexico is the largest silver producing nation in the world, I would say this trend is very interesting and something to pay attention to as we head into the future. And to answer the original question asked in this video, I think a silver shock is not only possible, but highly likely and very soon. 